This conference will now be recorded. Right. So today's topic is hot folders. So today's topic is hot folders. So in SAP Commerce, in SAP Commerce, we have an integration technique called hot folder. We'll see that. Before we start the hot folders, let's see a little bit of background. We already discussed this, but let's recollect once. Okay. So you remember this diagram I covered in the beginning days. Okay, so this diagram I covered in the beginning days. So basically, this hot folder is the example of integration technique. Okay, this hot folder is one of the integration technique. This hot folder is one of the integration technique. Okay, good. Now, so what is the meaning of integration? Let's see. You can see this is the SAP Commerce system. This is the SAP Commerce system. And what is the purpose of Commerce system? Shopping or placing the order. What is the purpose of SAP Commerce system? Shopping or placing the order. And uh, so that means what SAP Commerce provides card, checkout, user, promotion, products, categories, okay, order, order submit, order status. These kind of functionalities are there in the SAP Commerce. Okay, so we have a SAP Commerce system. The purpose of SAP Commerce system is the purpose of SAP Commerce system is shopping or placing order. So that means SAP Commerce is responsible for cart checkout, okay, user promotion, product orders, categories, order status, and so on, so so on. So in a simple word, by using SAP Commerce, we can place the order. Now please remember this. Before placing the order, after placing the order, there are n number of activities to take care. Before placing the order, after placing the order, there are n number of activities to take care. Like uh, shipping, delivery, customer care, inventory, warehouse management, okay, pricing, fulfillment, availability, and so on, so on, so on. Okay, so before or after placing the order, there are n number of activities to take care. Like a pricing, availability, shipping, delivery, order management, invoice management, okay. Um, uh, then warehouse management, fulfillment, pricing, and like that, we have so many things. These kind of functionalities, okay. So these kind of functionalities are there in the proven system like SAP, PeopleSoft, and all. That means SAP is the proven system for order management, fulfillment, warehouse, okay, pricing, availability like that. So when we have these kind of functionalities proven in third party system, when we have these kind of functionalities or proven functionalities in the third party system, third party system can be SAP, third party system can be PeopleSoft and so on and so on. When we have these kind of functionalities in the third party system, it's time to exchange the data between the, these two systems. That means let the customer place the order here. Let the customer place the order here. Then give the order to SAP. Then in the SAP, let fulfillment happens. In the SAP, let fulfillment happens. So that means it's time to exchange the data between these two systems. It's time to exchange the data between these two systems. To exchange the data between these two systems, we need the integration techniques. To exchange the data between these two systems, we need the integration techniques. We have two types of integration techniques, synchronous integration and asynchronous integration. We have two types of integration techniques, synchronous integration, asynchronous integration. So please remember this, synchronous means what? Okay, so synchronous means what? So let's say, okay, I am here, you are here. Okay, so I am here and you are here. So what is the meaning of synchronous? Synchronous means, let's say you dialed my phone. If I am available, we talk each other. That's called synchronous. So that means in case of synchronous, both parties should be available. 
in case of synchronous both parties should be available now let's say asynchronous asynchronous means what let's say you dialed my number i am not available then you can leave the message you can leave the message then message is available in some place once i back i will take the message and i will continue whatever i supposed to do that's called asynchronous so that means in case of asynchronous even though you are not there i will do my work once you come back you do your work that's the advantage of asynchronous that's the advantage of asynchronous so that's why integrations are two types synchronous and asynchronous synchronous means what if i say if i say hey, i have a synchronous integration so that means without having both systems you cannot do the work if i say i have a asynchronous integration even though this this system is not available for few minutes no problem we can continue placing the orders okay so this is the meaning here so let me show you in the diagrammatic way so let's say you are saying okay let's say you are saying we have synchronous integration we have synchronous integration synchronous integration we can implement in n number of ways synchronous integration we can implement in n number of ways some companies uses the rest services some companies use the cpi some companies use the uh, direct rfc calls some companies use the uh, hana queries and so on so on so synchronous integration we can implement in n number of ways let's say your company is having synchronous integration what does it mean so let's say this system is not available for 10 minutes if this system is not available for 10 minutes and your commerce system is available people can play the orders or cannot play the orders people can play the orders or cannot play the orders okay cannot play the orders because it's a synchronous both parties should be available both parties should be available now let's say you have the asynchronous integration in your company let's say you have asynchronous integration so please remember this asynchronous integration also we can implement in n number of ways we can implement using data hub we can implement using scpi okay we can implement using staging db servers we can implement using kafka we can implement using jms message queue like that and we also have the hot folder we'll discuss the hot folder today now let's say your company is having asynchronous integration then let's say your sap system is down for 10 minutes and your commerce system is available even though your sap system is down your integration technique is asynchronous people can play the orders people can play the orders so this is the advantage of the asynchronous integration now out of the synchronous and asynchronous which is having big advantage which is having big advantage synchronous integration or asynchronous integration asynchronous asynchronous then why companies are not using asynchronous all the ways so please remember this in real time okay so in real time so we will be having hybrid integration okay hybrid integration so what is the meaning of hybrid okay for some scenarios they will use synchronous integration okay for some scenarios for some scenarios they will use asynchronous integration so this is what mostly you see in the real time again it's a not a mandatory here not a mandatory but uh, we can see most of the companies will have like this so in real time we will be having hybrid integration what is the meaning of hybrid integration for some scenarios we will go with the synchronous integration for some scenarios we will go with the asynchronous integration now you can ask a question when to go with the synchronous when to go with the synchronous integration okay next you can ask a question when to go with the synchronous integration when to go with the synchronous integration and when to go with the 
asynchronous integration. So please remember this. Please remember this. Let's take a scenario customer data, product data like that. So let's take the scenario customer data, product data like that. Is the data changes very frequently? Okay. So is this data changes very frequently? No. So, okay. Uh, so customer data means what? Let's say you are the customer. Your first name, your last name, your mobile number, your email ID, your address. Those changes frequently? Answer is mostly no. If the data scenario is like this, if the data scenario is like this, if the data okay, does not change, okay, does not change frequently, then for these scenarios, go with asynchronous. Go with asynchronous. So that means what? So you have the, okay, you have the product data here, customer data here, some other data here and all. So these data does not change frequently. For that scenarios, go with the asynchronous. For that scenarios, go with the asynchronous. Please remember this year, whatever I am telling, these are kind of a best practices. Always your company will have some kind of explanation why they are going with the always synchronous, why they are going with the always asynchronous like that. But these are kind of a best practices. Now let's come back to other scenario. What the other scenario? When to go with the synchronous? Okay, when to go with the synchronous? If your data logic is complex, okay, if your data is logic, logic is complex, then go with the synchronous. Example, okay, so example, so in the B2B projects, pricing is very complex here. Especially in B2B projects, pricing is very complex. Why I am telling in the B2B projects pricing is complex? Because in the B2B projects, price is calculated based on the customer to customer, location to location, okay, volume to volume, and there are different pricing options like a uh, customer pricing, end user pricing, market pricing, okay, like that uh, we have different, different pricings. Let's say if you are selecting customer pricing, okay, so this is how it works. Let's say the B2B project, you selected customer pricing and uh, quantity is 20. Okay, you selected customer pricing and the quantity is 20. Then let's say for product one, the price is $14. Okay, so let's say you selected contract pricing. So this is customer pricing, contract pricing. And the same quantity, same product. Okay, same quantity, same product. Price may be $13.8. So now you can visualize the big challenges to calculate all these things. That's why I'm saying if your data logic is complex, then go with the synchronous. So for example, in the B2B projects, pricing is very complex. So that means pricing may change from customer to customer, volume to volume, region to region. Okay. And also based on the pricing conditions, like a um, customer pricing, contract pricing, end user pricing, okay, market offer pricing, like that we have so many pricing types. Based on the selection, your price may change. So therefore, in this situation, Instead of loading the data here, instead of loading the pricing data here, instead of loading the pricing data here, it is better let the pricing data here only. It's better let the pricing data here only. Then when customer comes and select the product, get the price of the product directly from SAP. Get the product price directly from SAP. Get the product price directly from SAP. So that's the example of Synchronous integration, asynchronous integration. So that's why I'm telling in the real time, mostly companies will have hybrid integrations. In the real time, mostly companies will have hybrid integration. What is the meaning of hybrid integration? For, for some scenarios, synchronous integration, for some scenarios, asynchronous integration. So this is what we discussed before, but I just recollected it one more time. So this uh, is the SAP system. Chana, what about uh, solar uh, pricing presets and filters? If it is like okay, 
see if it is a synchronous again so please remember this if you are going with the synchronous then obviously so the price data whatever you have here there are two options right whether you are maintaining the price data in the commerce or not or fully depend upon sap if you fully depend on sap then the problem is as you mentioned so so if the price is not at all there in the commerce if the price is not at all there in the commerce then obviously you will show here so let's take the example of uh, uh, dell.com okay so you will show here okay just a product okay just a product may not be price then this price will be calculated once you log in based on your ship to sold to your account basically and that may be coming from solar or it may be directly fetched from directly fetched from asap so therefore that's why if you are thinking that you want to use the solar you want to use the facets and all then you need to go with the near real time pricing near real time pricing may not be exact pricing at least near real time pricing you should go so that's why three scenarios are there synchronous pricing asynchronous pricing and near real time pricing if you are planning to go with uh, this kind of facets prices all these things in the search page and the category page i would suggest go with the near real time pricing near real time pricing means what at least it is going to match so that means every 10 minutes you load instead of loading every day four times every 10 minutes you load once instead of not loading at all every 10 minutes you load so if you are planning this this kind of scenarios facets prices in the search page and the category page then i would suggest to go with the near real time pricing example kafka example kafka so therefore with the kafka you can able to achieve real near real time pricing where you will be loading the data very frequently not exactly real time very frequently maybe every 10 minutes once every half an hour once like that that's why in the b2b projects in the b2b projects so here you will see a uh, so whatever prices you saw here and whatever prices you show in the product page may not be exact prices that's why you may see some disclaimers the actual price you will see in the checkout journey so here you are getting the data so let's say you are using the solar document right so if you are using the solar document whatever prices you are seeing in the search page and the category page are not exact prices so it may be approximate price so that's why actual prices will be calculated when you add the item to cart and click on checkout so during the checkout you will have a real time call to sap and get the actual prices discounts okay uh, discount surcharges taxes all these things you get it and show in the checkout journey that's how you will have so that's why you remember in the functional sessions i told a functionality called the cart simulate you guys remember yes sir in the functional sessions i told a functionality called the cart simulate what is the purpose of cart simulate so SAP you will add item to cart yes you added item to cart and click on checkout when you click on checkout you are making sure whatever you are seeing here is exactly matching with the sap or at least there in the sap and get the taxes surcharges mov fees all these thing from sap and showing the checkout journey is that clear yes sir okay good now let's come back here please so that's what we discussed so then let's go to this document so that's why i said uh, most of the companies may have hybrid integration what is the meaning of hybrid integration i told you then this diagram also i explained already but let's recap quickly once now we are exchanging the data between sap system and the commerce system now we are exchanging the data between sap system and the commerce system when you exchange the data between these two systems you should know some common terminologies let's say sap team is telling that they are giving the materials so that means commerce it is a product let's say sap team is telling that they are giving the condition record then in the commerce it's a price rows or discount rows yeah, let's say sap system is telling that i am giving the contact so that means b2b customer 
SAP system is telling that I am giving the customer. Okay, so B2B unit, B2B customer. Let's say SAP system is telling that I am giving the inventory. So in the commerce system, that is called stock level. So this is a nice small diagram which will give bigger visibility when you exchange the data between SAP system and commerce system. That's it. So as I told you, um, so we have two approaches, synchronous integration, asynchronous integration. Customer data, product data does not change frequently. So you can go with the asynchronous. Pricing data, uh, pricing data in case of B2C projects, go with the asynchronous. In, in case of B2B projects, go with the synchronous. Like this, these are all there. So that's why here I put the note. What is the note here? Even though I told all those things, these are all must be decisioned. Okay, so that is the decision must be strategic and agreed across all the organizations. So if your company is not following whatever I said, that's okay. Nothing wrong there. There could be strong reason why they decided like that. Okay, but these are all the best practices. So that is what it is. Next, so you need to remember some more terminologies as we are exchanging the data between SAP system and the commerce system. So let's say SAP system is giving the SAP system is giving the material data. Okay, how they will give the material data? There is something called IDOC. Like uh, so, we are trying to insert the data, update the delete, update the data, delete the data in SAP Commerce. How? Using impexes, right? Similarly, in SAP, we have something called IDOC. Okay, so however, however, in SAP Commerce, we have impexes. So you need to visualize like this here. Okay, in SAP Commerce, how do I insert the data? How do I update the data? How do I delete the data using impexes? Similarly, in SAP, so they, they have IDOCs. So that means if you are getting something from the SAP means that is in the form of IDOCs. So therefore, therefore, now see the relation please. Let's say SAP team is telling that, okay, SAP team is telling that they are giving the materials for you. Let's say SAP team is telling that they are giving the materials for you. If they are giving the materials, the meaning is they are giving a IDOC called a Okay, they are giving the IDOC called a mat mass. Materials are nothing but the products in SAP Commerce. SAP materials are nothing but products in the SAP Commerce. So therefore, they are giving the mat mass for you. So in a simple word, they are telling, I am giving the mat mass. I am giving the materials. So that means SAP Commerce product. Okay, SAP Commerce product. Similarly, Let's say they are telling that I am giving the LOISTD. SAP team is telling that I am giving the LOISTD, IDOC. They are giving that means what? They are giving the inventory, which is nothing but SAP commerce stock level. Like that, you can also remember this kind of IDOC information. So they are telling that they are giving the bed, uh, uh, deb mass. Debmas means they are giving the customer data, B2B unit data, and like that, so on, so on, so on. So. Then just now we discussed the pricing. In case of B2C, pricing, you can go with the asynchronous. In case of B2B, pricing, you can go with the synchronous because pricing is very complex in case of B2B projects. And so on, so on, so on. So. Now, as I mentioned, we can exchange the data between the systems through integration techniques. We have a synchronous integration technique, asynchronous integration technique. We have a synchronous integration technique, asynchronous integration technique. Okay, synchronous integration technique we can implement in n number of ways. Asynchronous integration techniques we can implement in n number of ways. Now we are discussing one of the integration technique called the hot folder. Now we are discussing one of the integration technique called the hot folder. Okay, so please remember this hot folder is part of SAP Commerce. It is not a technology. Okay, hot folder is part of SAP Commerce. It's not a technology. So it's the simplest, best integration, which is part of SAP Commerce. Now, as I said, hot folder is part of SAP Commerce. 
then which extension will provide so you can see there is an extension here accelerator services okay you can see accelerator services this is the extension this is the extension is providing the hard folders for us accelerator extension is the one which is providing the hard folders for us so that will help us to import the data and so on so so on so okay that's it now these hot folders whatever we are studying now is based on the spring integration framework so that means it is part of sap commerce and also it uses the spring integration framework nothing more than that so that means this this extension accelerator services extension and spring framework integration these two are sufficient and these two are part of sap commerce for us to implement the hot folders okay so please remember this we are discussing the hot folder means what we are trying to load the data which is there in the sap or people soft or some other system into sap commerce okay we load the data into sap commerce so data can be in sap data can be in sap commerce sorry data can be in sap data can be in people soft data can be in some other place so we are simply loading the data into sap commerce and to load that we can use n number of ways or to load the data we have n number of ways one of the way is hot folder now we are discussing the hot folders okay now let's take a scenario here can you please observe this diagram let's take this scenario let me increase the size okay so i am just explaining this diagram please understand the scenario once you understand the scenario writing the code is not a problem you will write very easily so the scenario is what we okay uh, you remember we have courses table right you remember we have courses uh, table yes or no we created the courses table yes or no yes yes okay so you can see so this is the courses table we already created now assume that courses data is there in the sap system or people's of system or some other system they are giving that data for me i need to load into commerce they are giving the data for me i need to load into commerce that's the requirement okay so we already have the courses uh, item type our courses table then right now i don't have the data so data can be product data data can be okay uh, data can be price data data can be courses data right now i am taking the courses so assume that this courses data is there in the sap system people's of system some other system they are giving the data then how do i load into commerce system how do i load into commerce system that's the question for that the answer is can you see this one please as i am telling data is available here data is available in the sap system data is available in the people's house system data is available in some other system data can be product data data can be price data data can be courses data right now we are taking the courses data now i want to load that into commerce table i want to load that into commerce table table can be product table table can be price table table can be courses table right now i am selecting the courses table and uh, to load this data i want to use hot folders to use the hot folders okay before okay to use hot folders we need to have some pre conditions let's say example so now sap commerce is the system sap is the system these two want to exchange the data if these two want to exchange the data do they follow some common common conditions pre conditions or not let's say you yeah. and me want to exchange the data are we following the common common some steps yes or no yes, sir. right now i am uh, you and me are exchanging the data right so i am teaching you are listening and you are responding so for this we are exchanging the data to exchange this data are we following some common protocols answer is yes right so whenever i say are you listening then you are saying yes 
that means what if you are not responding then there is no communication so that means to exchange the data between the systems we need to follow some common protocols we call it as a protocols or we need to follow some preconditions what are the preconditions to follow to exchange the data please understand this one more time let's say so right now you and me are exchanging the data definitely we are following some preconditions definitely we are following protocols what are the protocols uh, we are following what are the preconditions we are following whenever whenever i say are you guys are there you are saying yes whenever i say did you guys getting it you are saying yes whenever i say do you have any questions you are responding so these are all like a protocols we are following if you if you are not at all responding whenever i ask the question then it's difficult to exchange the data yes or no yes sir yes so that's why whenever we have the systems and whenever we are exchanging the data between the systems definitely we need to follow the protocols we need to follow some preconditions so sap cannot tell oh i will give like this only sap commerce cannot tell oh i will do like this only both should agree with the common protocols common preconditions then only you can exchange the data you cannot say that oh i will only join 730 right if i say 7 o'clock you need to listen okay join the 7 o'clock if you say no 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 i will join 730 only then it will not work similarly okay similarly if i say um, uh, uh, let's say if you say that you no class on diwali i said okay if i say no 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 i will take it then there is no communication so it's a preconditions it's a protocols you should follow i should follow then only we can exchange the data okay now let's come back here please now i want to uh, use the hard folders to uh, use the hard folders what are the preconditions protocols step number 1 you are a source system source system means the one which is giving the data the one which is giving the data source system the one which is giving the data should should give the data whether it is a course is data product data in asterisk.csv file or xml file is also there here but xml file is not that recommended so so best recommendation is best recommendation is csv file but xml is also possible asterisk.xml but xml data parsing and loading will take time so that's why most of the people use the csv file okay so what the rule one your source system give the data whether it is a product data course data price data whatever may be the data it should give in the csv file then the second step is now let's say course data is converted into csv file that csv file should be dropped into sap commerce specific location drop this file into sap commerce specific location drop this file into sap commerce specific location this is the rule number 2 protocol 2 after dropping then sap commerce pick the file from that location and process it sap commerce pick that file okay pick that file and process it so these are the three steps three protocols can you guys pay attention can you guys pay attention what is the first protocol our first condition source system should give the data in the csv file assume that they are giving in the csv file what is the second condition drop that file into sap commerce specific location drop that file into sap commerce specific location drop that file into sap commerce specific location now third step is what sap commerce will pick from that location can you see this one please pick from this location and do process it or load it process it or load it now you should ask one question what is the question you should ask now you should ask one question the question is 
how to drop this file into this location so the question is how to drop the file in sap commerce specific location for that uh, solution one is manually is possible if you are thinking that your data loads are not very frequent just give me a second this conference will now be recorded all right can, can you see this one please now the question is how to drop this file into sap commerce specific location for that uh, uh, sometimes we go manually manually when it is possible here if your data loads are not frequent maybe uh, weekly ones if your data load is let's say weekly ones like that if weekly ones or monthly ones then go with the manual loads so that means manually you can take the file and drop it if your data loads are every day three times five times like that is manual what is possible uh, worth here manually manually dropping that file every day five times ten times is it good no sir no no so therefore we will go with the automated way automated way means what you can use some ftps to transfer the file some companies use as uh, uh, some etl tools so on to so on to it's up to us here so therefore now see the complete steps please so step number one is what okay step number one is what our rule number one your source system should give the data in the csv file okay assume that they are giving then you need to drop that file into sap commerce specific location how to drop that into specific location assume that your data loads are weekly ones monthly ones like that then uh, load it manually or uh, drop it manually take the file drop it here if your data loads are every day 10 times 4 times 5 times like that then go with the automated way with some ftps or etl tools and so on so so on next third third rule is what third protocol is what once you drop it here then sap commerce will pick from this location and process it sap commerce will pick from this location and process it that's it sap commerce will pick from this location and process it that's it sap commerce will pick from this location and process it that's it now in this so these are the uh, rules or protocols you need to follow to implement the successful hot folders now tell me in this entire process in the entire process what are the commerce steps what commerce should do which step we need to focus step number one step number two step number three or one two three or two three or only three which is the one we need to follow as a commerce consultant which is the one we need to follow as a commerce consultant only three three, only three. yes only three that's correct we are only responsible for three so these are the conditions exchanged after exchanging the conditions after exchanging the rules we only need to focus on step number three so that means whenever file is dropped here whenever file is dropped here your commerce should look for the file take it process it and load into sap commerce that's it if you understand this clearly then we will see the steps so you can see this is another diagram this is same thing only another diagram here okay same thing only another diagram you can see you have a product data you have a customer data you have a courses data in the sap system or some other system they will queue that data in the csv file you can see this is the csv file then that csv file will be dropped into sap commerce specific location this is the location after dropping sap commerce will pick that file and process it into respective type or table same diagram only little bit more explained here if you are clear with the requirement we'll start the implementation any questions uh, with the requirement question uh, like hmm. this file location is a file system one right uh, how is it commerce this file location is uh, not exposed to outside uh, systems right so it will be within the internet 
so you need to have permissions to that folder so so first of all you need to have the permissions to access that system mostly it will be intranet then even though you have permissions to this system then you need to have the right permissions to that folder then only you can drop this file otherwise you cannot have but then so if it is cloud controlled yeah if it is cloud based sap hosted on cloud so we don't so have access in the cloud there is a azure azure blob storage so that's the place you need to go and drop the file then that azure blob storage is connected with your uh, connected with your environment specific key and uh, password if you don't enter that key password then you cannot connect the moment you enter the that key and password then it will come to know that okay hey you are a chroma person you are a you are a uh, let's say dell person if within the dell you have development system qa system uat system right then obviously you need to have that many connections maintained let me show you that i'll show you that at, at the end how it will be in the cloud okay okay is it a part of accelerator services or is it a separate it is the same only dropping location is different okay dropping location is different and okay, and uh, if it is a cloud you need to do two step extra one is a dropping location is different second one is in the manifest.json you need to maintain the hot folder information two steps are different okay we will discuss the cloud once we finish the on premise okay okay sir yes now let's understand the on premise please let's not deviate to the cloud cloud steps i will show you at the end for now let's focus on the on premise is the requirement is clear everyone if clear then we'll start the implementation yes clear sir okay good then so in uh, so now we are loading the courses courses type data right so therefore step number 1 is create courses type if already created then no need otherwise you need to create it where can we create it okay where can we create it in the items.xml file so you can see in the items.xml file okay in the item.xml file so this is the type i created so this is the type i created that's it this is the step number 1 okay see this one channa triple rs courses channa triple rs courses this is the first step we have done then the second step is you can uh, um, second step is you can do the build add the server and perform hsc update so once you perform the hsc update this kind of table get created this kind of table get created right now no data here this kind of table get created right now no data here next step number 3 i need to load this data so to load the data now i need to create the hot folder for that you can go to the core extension channa triple rs core extension in the core extension you can go to the resources you can see there is a you can go to the resources you can see there is a integration here integration here now you need to create the hot folder okay hot folder spring configuration create a hot folder in configuration so how what does it mean we'll understand first listen this thing. so instead of i do from scratch i will copy existing one and modify it okay so instead of we do from scratch copy existing one and modify it this is the easiest way so that we will not do mistakes instead of we do from scratch copy existing one and modify it why i am doing this instead of typo mistakes i am doing this therefore i will copy let's say we have a electronics one right i will copy this and paste it i will copy this and paste it when you pasted 
okay when you pasted now i am creating for triple uh, rs right you can give your own name so let's say i am giving triple rs one save okay i am giving the triple rs one save okay now refresh once so that that file is appearing so now you understand why i copied because this i no need to type it this i no need to type it okay good now i copied this one from electronics right so that's why electronics i will replace with my name called triple rs so therefore you have capital elect capital e in the electronics we have small e in the electronics so therefore what i am trying to say that replace okay capital electronics with the small electronics uh, replace capital electronics with the capital triple rs1 and the small electronics small electronics with the small triple rs1 so this is what i am doing now okay so therefore let's take this capital electronics control h uh, match the case with the triple rs1 replace all it is replaced okay next similarly we have small electronics you can see this also i want to replace with a small triple rs1 replace all that's it here this is what you need to do now we need to understand what is the purpose of this okay now we need to understand what is the purpose of this or what this contains okay we need to understand what is the purpose of this what this contains okay okay anyway i already created this here i am just deleting this whatever we did because i already have this okay now let's understand what is the purpose of this so the first purpose is in this file you can specify the file dropping location in this file we specify the file dropping location so what is the purpose of this so the first purpose is we specify the okay you can see in, uh, as part of the integration we should have the file dropping location so therefore we specify file dropping location okay now look at here please okay so bean so this is the base directory triple rs i am saying the location is my data directory then tenant id then triple rs tenant id then triple rs so what does it mean you can see here please okay so this is the data directory this is the data directory so in that accelerator service in that import then tenant id can you see this one tenant id i have only one tenant called master tenant i have only one tenant called master tenant in that what the folder name in that what the folder name so this is the folder name if this is not there create it if this is not there create it so create like this triple rs and whatever name you want you can keep it here whatever name you want you can keep it so this is the first step this is the first step i am repeating this one more time so what is the purpose of this or what it contains so the first one is we specify the file dropping location for example you can see here i have written something like a uh, base directory okay base data directory this one in that accelerator in that tenant id so you can see dollar tenant id so right now we have only one tenant called master tenant in that you can specify whatever folder name you want so i specified the triple rs folder name that's it i specified the triple rs folder name so that is what the first purpose of the code then then the second one is now you will be dropping the file here right once you drop the file here you may drop the see you can drop the csv file you can drop some other file also right let's say you can drop your image also can i process your image no can i process your csv yes so therefore it's time to 
look for the match in file and move for processing okay it's time to look for the matching file and move for processing okay so that is what the second logic can you see this one please for that we are going to use the inbound adapter inbound channel adapter for this we are using look for the matching file for that we use inbound channel adapter so this is the adapter given for us what is the purpose of this adapter it will look for the matching file it will look for the matching file then how do we do that you can see here inbound channel adapter then it is going to look for the file file from where from this location can you see this one base directory tubularis base directory tubularis so therefore this inbound channel adapter look for the files in this location what kind of files you can see dot csv files dot csv files then why you we are using this uh, uh, slash d and all i will explain so for now dot csv files i am looking for then i am looking for the files at what frequency frequency is every second like this you can specify the scanning file information so look for the matching files information in this particular file now assume that okay so there is a matching file once a matching file is there then we need to move for the processing folder that's where move for the processing folder that's where your csv will be converted into impex and the impex will be loaded into sap commerce so therefore third step is move for after matching after matching file so first one move for processing so in the processing in the processing in the processing so your asterisk dot csv will be converted into impex file then this impex will be loaded this impex data will be loaded into sap commerce this impex data will be loaded into sap commerce that's what we are specifying in the third step move for processing so you can see i am specifying the processing location what is the processing location so i am telling the same place you will see once we drop it so then processing location in the processing location this will be converted into impex how this will be converted into impex i'll show the logic now how this will be converted into impex i'll show the logic now so this is the purpose of this file so this file majorly having three uh, three activities specify the file dropping location look for the matching files and move for processing after moving for processing so your csv will be converted into impex that impex data will be loaded into sap commerce that is what we need to see now so for any questions Chana, for directory you used hash right uh, hash what, what is the meaning of that which one location here so i am not giving the complete path right if i am yeah. not giving the complete path then you can use uh, hash to refer the relative paths okay okay yeah good now can you see this one please okay so far it is good now what is pending i said uh, you uh, matching file will be moved for processing the csv will be converted to impex and the impex will be loaded into sap commerce now we need to understand how the csv is converted into impex and how it is loaded so therefore okay can you see this one this is the diagram we are trying to understand now so this is the know, nodes can we find the base directory hmm? base directory where can we yeah, find this search with the base directory here you will find it okay those are the constants you have you will find it otherwise i'll search and show you just focus here first okay, okay. now let's see this one please okay so what i am trying to say that yeah yeah 
So let's create a small diagram for easy understanding. Let's create a small diagram for easy understanding. Now let me put this one here. Okay. So and uh, let me put this uh, here. Can you see? The, can you can you guys please see this? So therefore, what I am trying to say that yeah. Now you can understand easily. Okay. Now you can understand easily. So let's say this is the SAP system. SAP system is giving the courses data. When it is giving the courses data, assume that this is the courses data in the CSV file. Okay. Courses data in the CSV file. Then uh, this 08 column should go to course code. This first column should go to course name. This second column should go to course, uh, let's say duration. This third column should go to course amount. So that means now it's time to do the mappings. CSV column data versus our courses item type data that mapping we need to do so therefore now it's time to do the mappings is that clear four to step okay Listen. so therefore i should i should specify this column data should go here 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 like this i need to specify so where can we specify that we can specify that in the okay hot folder spring that xml file so this is the hot folder spring that xml file so here there are so much information here don't worry about this just focus our scenario don't worry about this just focus our scenario that's it because here so much of things are there we only need to consider our scenario so here so much of hot folder configuration is there here so these are all OOTB. let's not uh, worry about the OOTB. think about only our scenario similarly you can write for other other uh, scenarios i'm just putting the code here so this is the logic we are writing so this is the logic we are writing now let me explain this logic this is the logic we are writing. Let me explain the logic now. The first one is I am trying to create a bin ID. That bin ID refers the default converter mapping. What is the default converter mapping? It's a OOTB file. So I created a bin ID which is having the parent called a converter mapping. So what this converter mapping will do? So basically it is going to take the uh, CSV file, okay, CSV file and do the mappings, you can see, converter mapping, impex, ma impex converter, it is going to convert to impex. So therefore, what I am trying to do is that, I am trying to create a bin ID and that bin ID is having, okay, cl class called default converter mapping, this default converter mapping takes the CSV file. So now I am telling that take the CSV file and map to impex. So that impex, can you see this one please? That impex, I am telling this, this mapping. So it is going to take the CSV file, right? What is the CSV file? This is the name. This is the name. So therefore you need to follow these names here. If you are not giving this name, then it will not work. I will show you. When we are dropping the file, I will show you that. So therefore, I am trying to create a, a bean ID, which is a default converter mapping, which will take the your CSV file. After taking the CSV file, what to do? I am asking to refer this. I am asking to refer this. That is nothing but this one. After taking the CSV file, what to do? I am asking to refer this. What to do? I am asking to refer this. Okay, what to do? I am asking to refer this. What is this? This is having the impex converter. This is having the impex converter. So that means basically it will convert to impex here. 
So you can see it is an impex converter. Basically, it is going to convert into impex. When it is converting into impex, then which column should go where? You need to specify. Which column should go? You need to specify. So therefore, I am writing the impex header. In the impex header, so this is the type code, name, duration, amount. Then 08 column should go to code. First column should go to name. Second column should go to duration. Third column should go to amount. Like that, I am specifying the impex information and the corresponding CSV information. Here, plus zero. Plus zero means unique values. Plus zero means unique values. Like this, you can specify the converter mapping or impex converter. So therefore, let me repeat this one more time. It is simple, straightforward. I am trying to give the, I am trying to create a bin ID which is having the default con, uh, default converter mapping which will take our uh, CSV file. It will take our CSV file. After taking the CSV file, what to do? I am asking to refer, refer this. What to do? I am asking to refer this. What is this? You can see here. This is having impex converter mapping. This is having impex default invert uh, in default impex converter it is having what that will do it will it will take the csv data and uh, map to the impex so therefore i have written the impex for the courses type and uh, i am specifying 08 column should go here first column should go here third column should go here like this we have specified that's it that's it nothing more than that that's it, that's it, nothing more than that. Now, if you have any questions so far with this discussion, you can ask me, else we'll move to the next one. Uh, in the value of you specified default impex product header, is that a comment or? Uh, Which one? Uh, after value, hash default impex product header, that one. Yeah, it's kind of a yeah. comment. Okay. Okay, that's it. Next. So once this is done, once this is done, once this is done, now it's time to test the results. So step number five, let's test the results. Okay, step number five, let's test the results. So how do we test the results? Yeah. Back off. This conference will now be recorded. Okay, now let's test the results. Now test the results here. So we already created a dropping location. We already created the dropping location. Now test the results. How do we test the results? Now I need to, uh, step number one is what? Your source system is giving the data in the CSV file. Assume that it is giving. So let me show you that. Assume that it is giving. Let me show you that. Uh, clients, not clients. Okay, code. Or here CSV file. Do you see any CSV file here? Yeah, here. Okay, so courses this one. So let me open this and see what data is there in this. Let me open this and see what data is there. Okay, so you have one out one hybrid, some data is there. So that means this is the column zero, column one, column two, column three, column zero, column one, column two, column three. Like that, we have the data. Now, can you see this one? This name, whatever we have, is it matching with this? Yes. So therefore, take this file. So this is what your source system is giving. Okay, drop into specific location. Now I am going with a manual approach. Drop into specific location. So therefore, take this and drop into this location. I am dropping manually. Can you see this one, please? Import master triple RS. I am dropping. Whenever I drop, please observe here. I dropped. Now you can see it went to the processing. In the processing, you can see your uh, CSV is converting into impex. Now it is processed. After process, it is archived. After process, it is archived. So that's why if you go and see the now, 
you got the data. If you go on to see now, you got the data. That's it. If you go on to see now, you got the data. That's it. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Okay, good. Now, second scenario. Second scenario is assume that this is modified tomorrow and you are dropping. Can you say? Can you please understand this? Let's say this is modified. So instead of 101, this will be SAP Commerce. Instead of hybrids, it's a SAP Commerce. 102, let's say SAP Commerce Functional and SAP Commerce Technical. So this is how it is modified tomorrow. Today is done here. This is the tomorrow's results. This is the tomorrow's results. Now let me take that and drop it again. Okay, so please understand this. Today we dropped and it's success. Today we dropped and the success. Tomorrow data is modified. Data is modified and it's dropping. So I just modified the data, right? Now I am dropping. Let me look for that file again. Go here, go here. So this is the file, right? This is the modified file. So take this and drop it again and see. Drop it again and see. Okay, accelerator services, import. Okay, master. Now I am dropping here. If I am dropping, it is not at all picking. Not picking for processing. Why? The reason is, whenever you drop, it should have a unique name. Whenever you drop, it should have a unique name. Whenever you drop, it should have a unique name. Now, today, yesterday, this is the name. Today, also, this is the name. That's why it is not picking. That's the reason. That's the reason. Here, I have mentioned plus D. Plus D means any digits. Any digits. So, that's why generally in the real time, generally in real time, we will have file name as, we will have file name as, your scenario hyphen date and time dot csv like this we will have so date and time means at what time it is coming at what date it is coming at what date what time it is coming at what date what time it is coming that you will put here so that it will be unique name so that it will be unique name is that clear okay so yes, now i will come here let me change the name so let's say I am giving one, two, two, something. Let's see if it is processing. I just drop the file. Now you can see it went to processing. And it went to, no, still it is processing. Yeah, it's processed. It is archived. Now you can go to SAP Commerce and see. Is it changed? SAP Commerce functional, SAP Commerce technical? Yes, Yes. So, so therefore, first scenario is what? Okay. Scenario one, file name uh, must be different every time. So that's why, what the general syntax we follow? We follow this syntax. This is the first point. Second point is, our second scenario is, right now, this file is separated with what? This file is separated with what? Semicolon, right? Separator. Right now, this file separator is what? Semicolon. So right now, your uh, data is separated. Column 0, column 1 data is separated with a semicolon. What if your company want a different separator? This is called delimiter here. So right now, your column data is column data delimited with semicolon right now column data is column data separator delimiter column data delimiter 
is semicolon. What if your company wants something else? They don't want semicolon, they want something else. Okay, so they want something else. Maybe they want a comma, they want something else. So no problem here, that is possible. I'll just show you quickly here, you can see. So SAP hybrid, uh, B limiter, a hard folder, SAP hybrid, hard folder, B limiter. Okay, how to change hard folder, D limiter. Can you see this one? So this is the, uh, this is the question. How to change hard folder, D limiter is the question. And you can see this is, uh, tick mark. Tick mark means this is the best answer. So therefore, you need to go to this particular uh, location and change this bean ID as per your requirement. So the bean ID, whatever you are writing, right? You can see here, this guy is using uh, separator is the comma. So that's the requirement, you can see. So I'm trying to use this. Uh, uh, okay, so you can see my text contains comma. So they want to use comma. So for that, you need to go to that bean ID, whatever you are defined and specify your delimiter. So you can see this is a tick mark and green color. That means this is the best answer. That means this is the best answer. This is the third, uh, second scenario. Next third scenario. What is the third scenario? Let's say from SAP, we are getting the data, getting the data and before putting in SAP Commerce, before putting in SAP Commerce, I want to massage something. For example, okay, this is very common scenario here. For example, from SAP Commerce, sorry, from SAP, we are getting name, something like this here, name, something like this, SAP Commerce, too many spaces are there at the end. Okay, too many spaces are there at the end. Is it what to do? Store as is or I will trim the spaces? Okay. Trim the space. Is it what to store as is in SAP Commerce or trim the empty spaces at the end? Trim the empty spaces at the end and store in SAP Commerce. Which is the correct one? Trim the spaces and uh, okay. Store. Trim the because uh, see in SAP Commerce when you store it, it may give some problems. So trim it and store it. For that we can use decorators. So we have different different topics now. You can see. So let me close this. Not required. Okay. Okay. So let me close this. Not required. You can come here. You can see this one, please. Okay, can you guys see this one here? So they are using cell decorator. So you can see we are getting a customer data, customer data and we are getting the name. This name, I want to decorate it. So therefore for that we are using like this. Okay, name, cell decorator. For that we are using the OOTB class called customer name decorator. So that means you are passing the name to this decorator then what this customer decorator will do? So this is the OOTB file. It is having the logic to massage it. You can see it is checking if the name is null. If the name is having, you can see. They are trimming empty spaces and all. This is what to do it. So therefore in a simple, uh, what I'm trying to say that whenever you are getting data from SAP, SAP, so sometimes we need to massage the data before putting into SAP Commerce. For example, you can take the name example. This is having lots of spaces. So it is not worth it to store the spaces. So that's why we can use the decorators. Right now, this is the cell decorator. So therefore, name you are passing to the cell decorator. So this is nothing but this is a customer name decorator. So this has the bunch of the logic. This has the bunch of the logic to decorate your name. Okay, so to decorate your name, that's it. Similarly, assume that this decorator is not uh, worth for you. Uh, it is not uh, sufficient for you. Then you can write your own decorator here. You can just type star decorators.java. You will see so many decorators. 
If you are thinking that those are not sufficient, you can write your own decorator. If you are thinking that those are not sufficient, you can write your own decorator. You can see default, uh, uh, price factory decorator, name decorator, okay. Um, so many are there, marketplace, sell decorator like that. This is the purpose of the decorators to massage the data before putting in the SAP commerce. Before putting in the SAP commerce. Okay, that's about the name. Let's see one more example. Let's see one more example. Uh, what if uh, data has the so data? Let's see one more example. Let's see one more example. Okay, so there is a translator. So let's see one more example. There is a translator. So translator is nothing but what? You want to translate something. So let's say simple example, you are getting the price in rupees and you want to translate to something else. Let's say you are getting the uh, distance in the miles and you want to convert into kilometers like that. You need to do the translator. You need to do translate something. For that, you can use the translators. Let's say you are getting the stock. Stock, you want to translate to something else. So therefore, here, uh, product code is the zero and the stock is the first one. So stock, you are passing to the translator. What is the translator? You can see this is the OOTB1, which is the stock translator. What the stock translator is doing? This is the OOTB file. Basically, it is taking that stock and trying to do some massaging. If you want this massaging, you can do it. If you don't want, you can leave it. If it is not sufficient, you can write your own translator. Okay. So like this, we can use the translators and decorators before putting the data in the SAP Commerce. Before putting the data in the SAP Commerce. That's all about the hot folders. Now, if you have any questions, go ahead and ask. What if the this conference will now be recorded? Okay. So the next one is, that's about the hot folders. So the next topic is, so there is something called a script generator. So there are three questions. Question number one is, explain script generator. Question number two is, do you remember here? Um, so let's go to the courses type again. Let's go to the courses type again. So assume that a customer entered the data here directly like this. Okay, let's say $500. Course code is SAP Spartacus. Course duration is 50 hours. SAP Spartacus. Customer created the data directly here. They did not follow the Impex approach. Customer created the data directly here. Please understand the scenario. Customer created the data. Assume that this is the development back office. Development back office. And the client has created the data here. Okay, client created the data here directly. Created this data here directly. Now the now they are they are asking you to move this data, move this data to other environments. Other environments. So it means QA environment, UAT environment, production environment. This is not the best practice here. Okay, this is not the best practice, but somehow sometimes we have to do it. That's why I'm putting this in the red color here. This is not the best practice, definitely. But somehow some clients will do like this. So therefore, what is the second scenario? So first question is what? Explain the script generator. Second question is how to move the data entered in back office from one environment to another environment. Then third question is, now we are writing the impact headers, right? Writing the impact header is easy or uh, uh, it's kind of a little difficult. So let's go to the product impacts, right? So writing this impact header is easy or it is a little difficult. 
how do we know which is unique how do we know where is the relation and all is it little difficult or it's easy impact header writing the impact header is it easy or uh, uh, it is a little difficult yeah it's easy are you guys are there it's easy hello Uh, so writing impact header is it easy or little difficult so little difficult so then is there any way we can get this impact header exporting okay. so is there any way we can get this impact header that's the question so the answer for all this is same which we are covering now The answer for all this is same which we are covering now. Is the requirements are clear? So explain script generator how to move data from one, uh, one environment to another environment or how to get the impact header. Is the requirement is clear everyone? Yes, sir. Okay, good. So then, uh, then the first one is, so this is where we have the data. So just now I told Ajum that this is the development back office. We entered the data. Our client has entered the data. So development back office. Client entered data. Now I want to move to QA UIT production like that. So how do we do that? For that first what I will do is that I will go to the script generator. You can see in the in the back office. In the back office. in the tools there is something called tools so there is a script generator so what this will do is that okay in the back office tools script generator i am saying generate so what it is doing is that what it is doing is that it is trying to create the impact headers for all the types in the sap commerce it is trying to create the impact header for all the types in the sap commerce and this is here. Let me copy this and put in the Notepad++. See? Yes, sir. That's it. So now what is the script generator tell me? What is the script generator? Okay. So this generates impact header. Okay. Header for all the types in SAP Commerce. Is that clear? That's about the impact header, a script generator. Now, so third question is what? Is, it a, is there any way to get the impact header? Now, this is the way to get the impact header. Now, can you ask some uh, table or type impact header? Let's see whether it is there or not. You can ask any. Don't ask courses. Anyway, courses will study. Quickly. Uh, Are you export, there? Maybe exporting huh? from back. Okay. So, can you ask the question for which table you want to see the impact header? That's what I ask. Uh, no. What is no here? <laughs> okay, I said script generator. Script generator, given the impact header. Okay, script generator, given the impact header for all the types. And I copied and putting in the Notepad++. Now I am asking you. Tell me for which table you want to see the impact header. Let's, let's go with course. Huh? Course anyway Courses. we'll study or ask something different. Product. Uh, product, okay. So insert underscore update space product. So you can see this is the impact header. So you can see it is having all the product description, product code, product price, all these things are having. So this is how you can find the impact header in the easiest way. Ah, one more, please, quickly. One more. Uh, collections as well. Uh, collections. Collections. Huh? Do you have any collection type? Hello. 
Okay, category. Okay, insert underscore update. Okay, category. So you can see, so category index. So you can see category code, catalog, category code, category will have catalog versions, category ID. Okay, so unique equal to true. See, everything is given. This is the easiest way to find out the impact header. So question number one is answered. Question number three is answered. Is that clear? Question number one is answered. Question number three is answered. Is that clear? Question. Yes. Now let's focus on how to move the data. Now I want to move the data of which type? Courses type, right? Now let's go and look for the courses in this. Okay. Insert underscore update. Update space courses. C O U or SES courses. So this is the one. So I will copy this and put into the one more here. So this is the impact header for the courses. Now, do you want to use it as is or massage it is up to you. Now let's see whether we want to massage it. Okay. So insert underscore update courses. That's fine. Item means that uh, it will give unique numbering. Amount I want it. Course code, I want it. Creation time. Do I need the creation time here? So now we are moving the development data to production. Do I need the creation time? Not required. So let's say this is created February 10th year. This is created February 10th. Then if you move the creation time, then in the production also it will be February 10th, which is wrong, right? That's why we don't need it. So delete it. Next to duration, I want. Next to modify time, do you need? Let's say this is modified on uh, March 5th. So if I move this uh, modify time, then today we are moving, but in the production, you will see modify time is February 5th. Is that correct? That is wrong. That's why I'm deleting the modify time also. Then name, name is also required. Owner. Owner, do I need or I don't need? Owner means what? Let's say in the development, Chenna created. Now, today you are moving to production. You means, let's say, Vishnu is moving to production. You want to see Vishnu name or your name? Or Chenna name? Vishnu name, right? Because Vishnu is the one who is loading. So that's why owner name is also not required. Like this, you can massage it and put whatever you want. You can massage it and put whatever you want. So that's the uh, impact header. Now this impact header is ready. Okay, so now we are seeing the second step, right? So first step is here, make impact header ready. So we did. Then step number two is export the development data so how do i export it you can go to hac you can go to hac there is a export index okay. so there is the export index so you can see so console export index you can go here not import export import export so then paste that impact header and click on export content now this is exported now you can download this 